Wow. Back again. So I'm re-picking up laws. Re-picking up laws in the Bible and some of the terms in the Bible. The word Torah, a lot of people like to use the word Torah. They read the Torah. And then when you ask them, well, what is the Torah exactly? They don't know. So the word Torah means nothing more than the first five books of Moses. That's what the word Torah means, the first five books of Moses. Moses was a black man of the tribe of Levi. Uh, the Levites would be the Haitians today. Okay, Just to clear up your information. Just to give you a little background information about that. Um, so Moses wrote Genesis because the Most High showed him Genesis even though Moses was not there. So how do we know that? Right, because Moses was born in the book of Exodus. So how do we know that? Well, let's go into a book called the Apocrypha. Now we're going to be dealing on laws, right? Let's go into a book called the Apocrypha and let's go into 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter. So how did Moses know to write Genesis and the laws and the rules and the creation in in, uh, in Genesis? So if we go into the Apocrypha in 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter, it clearly, it clearly denotes that. And it came to pass that upon the third day that I sat under an oak, and behold, there came up a voice out of a bush against me and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, I am here, Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then he said unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai, where I held him by me a long time. See that? And told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times. Secrets of the times. So Moses knew the beginning, which was Genesis. Okay? And the end of times. And commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare, and these words shalt thou hide. See, all things is not for everybody. Everybody thinks everything is written in the scriptures and so forth like that. No, what is necessary for you is written in the scriptures. What is necessary for you is written in the scriptures. The thing is, do you believe? Do you believe? Okay. So we're dealing with laws, right? So Moses wrote from what was called the Mosaic Law. And the Mosaic Law starts at Exodus the 20th chapter right so when you go to Exodus the 20th chapter now the reason why the book of Exodus because we was leaving the land of Egypt the word Egypt means the land of bondage watch it's going to tell you that Exodus the 20th chapter and the Lord spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. See that? So the word Egypt means bondage. Now, let's look at the laws, the laws that was given to Moses, starting with what was called the Ten Commandments. And these commandments were written by the finger of the Lord on the ark of, the, of stone, on the tablets of stone. And the Lord spake all these words unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Bang. Now, these are felony laws. See that? These are felony laws. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That, that's law one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, nor any likeness of anything, that is in the heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or is in the water upon the earth. So, in Roman Catholicism and Islam, 
and all these false concepts in Krishna and all of that, they're already doing these things. So when you go in the Roman Catholic Church, you're dealing with all these concepts of idols. You're dealing with idols. Okay? You're dealing with idols. Graven images. Islam, they got a rock. They're dealing with graven images. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. So what do they do? Right? So that was the second law. Right? You shall not bow down. This is the third law. You shall not bow down to yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's the third law. Okay? Let's go. Fourth law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taking his name in vain. So that's why I don't say the Most High's name in Hebrew over and over and over like these Israelites, like, you know, like we equal. See, you take his name in vain. Okay, I don't do that. That's the fourth commandment, fifth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seven days is the Sabbath or the day of rest unto the Lord thy power. In it thou shalt do no work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seven days. Now, so now the Lord rested. Now, did the Lord get tired? No, the Lord never gets tired. How do we know that? Let's go up in the book of Isaiah. The Lord never gets tired. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, the 40th chapter and the 28th verse. He's going to tell you himself that he never gets rest. He never gets tired. So when he rested, all it was was he stopped creating. Okay, Isaiah 40, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding, so he does not get weary. See that? Let's look at the sixth law. Remember, honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy power has given thee. So the white man has switched that around. And he said Mother's Day. Okay, see, see how he tricked you? He said Mother's Day. The Lord said, Honor thy father and mother. Seventh law, thou shalt not kill, meaning that you shall not murder, premeditated murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery, sleeping with another man's wife. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That is the Ten Commandments. Peace. See? So that is the Ten Commandments. This is the beginning of what is called the Mosaic Law. Part Two Laws. So throughout the Bible, there are more. So they counted 613 laws, starting from the Mosaic Law. But yet throughout the Bible, there are many different laws throughout the Bible, many different laws. Christ gave hundreds of laws. So now you got to go into what is a law? What is a law? Okay. You have to go into that. That's why when you study the Bible and you study the laws, in a way, it makes you a lawyer. Okay? So, in one page alone, I have biblical laws on marriage, divorce, adultery, whoremongering. Sex is marriage according to the Lord. Okay? Sex is marriage according to the Lord. You know, there's verses on that. 
Then there's the court case within the Bible, fields of law, property law, contract law, criminal law, commercial law, family law, constitutional law, procedural law. See that? So you got to understand all of that. This is dealing with law as, the, as legal synopsis. As the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, honorable judge, the Most High for his own pleasure created and validated an adversarial court system within the entire universe. This system designed to cause mankind to enter a plea through sole legal representation by his firstborn son, the advocate Jesus the Christ subsequently placed man in a position of submission to the son's counsel in order to overcome the legal accusations and jurisdictional powers of the prosecutor. The most subtle son of the judge, Satan, breaking down the court case. If you are not studying these things, you are not studying the Bible. As a reward for his passionate and proprietation defense of his clients, the heir apparent, the only begotten son of the father of spirits, came into his inheritance and ascended to the bench, becoming supreme court chief justice, head lawgiver and lord and chief executive officer of his father's estate, the universe and all entities within, within its jurisdiction, case dismissed. So this is how deep this thing gets. This is how deep this thing gets. Okay, this is the court case that you're dealing with from Genesis to Revelation. So you're probably saying, well, how is this so? Because when you jump back to Genesis, the third chapter, here comes Satan right here. Now the serpent, which is Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have the Lord said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So now he's coming down, and he's lying to her, and she falls for it. This sister falls for it. Okay? So this is who Christ had to go up against. This is who he had to go up against. So this... When you get into this stuff, man, this stuff gets heavy. This stuff gets heavy. Okay, so just breaking you down some pieces of our law. So when we were studying uh, law, we didn't just come out of nowhere. These are the books that we studied. Black's Law Dictionary. Contract text, restatement of contracts, quick study law reference charts, bar charts, Black's Law Pocket Dictionary, the tools of argument, how the best lawyers think, argue, and win, a civil action, the Buffalo Creek disaster, Nelson's Illustrated Dictionary of the Bible, Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. We didn't just sit down and come up with madness we study the rose book of bible charts maps and timelines the holy bible with the apocrypha king james 16 11 see that so we studied this stuff And this is how the white man runs this world, through law.
he sends his children to law school. That's why you got to go to him, Stein and Stein. So now let's go into some of the terms as to law. Okay, let's go into some of the terms into law. What is law? Law, that which is laid down, ordained, or established in a generic term is a body of rules or action or conduct prescribed by controlling authority. See that? By the controlling authority having a binding legal force. That which must be obeyed and followed by citizens subject to sanctions or legal consequences. So, here is a man in Albany, an old white man, laying down a law that says that you know, you can't go to parks. All stores must be closed down. He shuts down the whole city, the whole state as to what they can and cannot do. He's laying down a law that must be followed if not the citizens are subject to sanctions or legal consequences being arrested. So Manhattan was shut down by the mayor. Manhattan itself was shut down. Thousands of people were shut down. Millions of people were shut down. Showing you what a law is. Law, a set of social and intellectual practices that define a universe. So the entire universe, what he's saying is, defined by laws, rules, and regulations. How the sun moves, the stars at night, the moon, meteorites, comets, everything has rules and regulations as to how they travel, what they do, how light comes through from, from space. A set of social and intellectual practices that define a universe which you learn to function so you have your universe that exists within other universes. Also a system of rules and guidelines which are enforced through social institutions to govern behavior. See that? So inside your house you set up rules, laws. So the Most High has laws for his universe. See that? Part three, laws. So, law, now once again, I'm just breaking down terms. Law in a body or a group is called a constitution. So the white man created his constitution. Okay. which he said that he would uphold and that you're supposed to, you know, when you swear in on the Bible, which is a lie, okay? Because you're not supposed to swear by the Bible. See that? So he shows you when you go to court how he tricks you and lies to you. You're not supposed to swear by the Bible. You're not supposed to swear by the Most High. Let's, let's look at that. Let's look at law. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at the 33rd verse. So when they become president, they make them swear by the Bible to do this and do that. When you go to court, you they pull out a Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth so help you God? You just perjured yourself. You just trapped yourself 
because you don't know law. Okay, Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 33rd verse. Again, you have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform the, upon to the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all. See that? So the Old Testament said swear, and now Christ is coming and saying, swear not at all. But I say unto you, Christ says unto you, see, he's the new lawgiver, not the Moses law. Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. He said, you ain't supposed to do none of that. Neither shall thou swear by the head. So you see these black guys, they talk about I swear by my child or my dead grandmother or some crap like that. The Lord is not interested in that. He says, Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one hair white nor black. But what did he say to do? He said, But let your communication be yea, yea, or no, no. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. See that? Whatever else you say, you trap yourself running your mouth. He said, whatever else you run your mouth, that's why the lawyers, when you get arrested by police, the first thing your lawyer tells you, shut your mouth. Because you don't know what you're talking about. And people like to yap. Yap, 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 yap. yap. So, here is new law coming in. New law. Now, why is it that he was perfect? Because he never broke his law. What he said, he was going to do. Let's look at that. So they try to trap him in Matthew. Let's go up in Matthew. Matthew, the 26th chapter, and the 63rd verse. 62nd verse. Um, and the high priest, 62nd verse. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answers thou nothing? What is it with these witnesses against thee? Right? So, now how is he going to answer He's your example. And the Savior held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living power that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. So now the high priest is like you. I want you to tell us, man. And the Savior said unto him, Thou hast said, you said it. Nevertheless, I say unto you, see, he didn't, he did not perjure himself. He said, you said, no, I ain't say nothing. That's why he's the living example for you. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man, meaning Christ, sitting on the right hand of power of the Most High, coming in the clouds of heaven, when he returned, He's coming with the ships, okay, in what's called the day of the Lord. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, you have heard his blasphemy. So he never, you know, agreed with what they said. He never agreed with what they said. Never agreed. And this is the madness. Okay? So just breaking you down about laws. Right? Law in a body or a group is called a constitution. So when you go to Deuteronomy 4, verse 5, that was our constitution because it gave us society. Food. 
uh, how we were supposed to dress, the clothes we were supposed to wear. We wasn't supposed to be wearing hats. We were supposed to be wearing metries. Procedural rules. Um, many different rules, laws, sexual laws, food laws. Law in a body or a group is called a constitution. So let's read about that, Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. All right? Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 4 chapter. I'm going to drop down to 6th verse, 5th verse. He says, Behold, this is Moses talking. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power commanded me, that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. So we as a people now, we have nothing, man. We have nothing. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. These laws and rules that were given to us made us greater, which shall say, and hear all these sections and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So look at us now. We're not keeping the ways of the Mosa because we are in a foreign land. This is not our land. Bang. For what nation is there so great who have the Lord so nigh unto them as the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous? This is why you're supposed to love the Bible. As all this law which I've set before you this day. See that? Part four, laws. So I'm breaking down terms, right? Judgment. You hear about judgment in, in the Bible a lot. Judgment is a sense of knowledge sufficient to comprehend the nature of a transaction. The, a judgment is also the final decision of a court resolving a dispute and delivering the rights and obligation of the parties. The law, last word in a judicial controversy, it being the final determination by a court of rights of the parties upon matters submitted to it in an action. Judge. These are terms when you start to study the Bible, you must study these terms. Judge, an officer to be named in his commission who presides in a court. A public officer appointed to preside and minister the law in courthouse, the chief member of a court. Constitution. The organizing and laws of a nation state which may be written or unwritten establishing character. Meaning written, we had the laws written down on tablets and then they were written on uh, papyrus. We would roll them apart, scrolls, and roll them back. Okay. Unwritten is the oral laws written by, given by Christ. Establishing character. So these things were supposed to establish the character of us as a people. Constitution law consists of federal, state, constitutions, and judicial systems, decisions, interpreting and applying them concerns statute and powers of government. You must study 
these things for you to understand the Bible. Let's further move on. These are law terms. Mind you, statutory law, laws enact, enacted by a legislature, legislature, department of assembly, or a body of persons that make up state laws for state or union. It consists of two branches, the upper house, senate, or the lower house, house of representatives. All this, the U.S. government is made up of. Lay bodies at local levels are called city council, board of aldermen, statutes. Statutes have become an increasingly partial system. Common law, part of the legal system of the USA that consists in entirety of a body of past judicial decisions. As these decisions are rendered in particular cases, unlike statutes, the common law rests on no authoritative text external to judiciary. Judiciary, the branch of government invested with judicial powers, the authority exercised by the government department vested in courts and judges. Courts have general powers to decide, pronounce judgment, carry into between two parties persons also carry contempt powers barment of attorney you must study these terms to understand what happened in the bible the bible is not a religious book prosecution the act or process of prosecuting prosecute to bring a suit or to seek to enforce as a claim by legal process. So now what is a suit? A procedure in a court of law in which a plaintiff demands the recovery of a right or the redress of a wrong. These things tie up to Christ and the devil concerning us. Plaintiff, the party that begins an action at law, the complaining party. Prosecutor, one who institutes and carries on a suit, especially a criminal lawsuit. The devil is prosecution in the Bible, and he brought a suit against a suit, a procedure in a court of law in which a plaintiff demands the recovery of a right. See that? The devil is a top lawyer. Action is a lawsuit. Lawsuit. A case of an action or proceeding brought to a court of law for settlement. So the devil brought a lawsuit against us or a proceeding to the most high. Man, you don't know how deep this is. Proceeding, an act or course of action any action instituted in a court, defendant, one against whom an action is brought against. We were the defendant, Israel, we were the defendant, defense attorney, or advocate, the Christ. See that? The Christ. Felony, any of several grave crimes, as witchcraft, murder, rape, arson, idolatry, adultery, sodomy, all these things, we committed felonies, crime, an act or omission in violation of public law. So these laws was given to us and we committed crimes. Now in the Bible, crimes is called sin. 
That's why, let me read that to you, right? In the Bible, crime is called sin. Let's go in the book of 1 John, right? Make sure I got time. 1 John. First John, the third chapter and the fourth verse. Let's look at crime and sin. Crime and sin is the same two terms. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin or crime is the transgression of the law. See that? Sin or crime is the transgression of the law. And then once you transgress the law, you became convicted because charges a procedure was brought against you and you when you was found guilty you became a convict one found guilty of a crime so the devil brought a procedure against you to the most high Christ was your advocate your defense attorney but you lost he lost one found guilty of a crime serving a sentence in prison. So where are we now? We are now in Rikers Island. We are now in prison. Bail, one who becomes surety for the debt or default of another. Bail bondsman. Christ is our bail bondsman, one who provides a bond, right? So Christ put up his blood as a bond pack to get us out. Bond, that which binds or is held together a band uniting force or influence in commerce the condition of goods stored in a bonded warehouse until duties are paid we are in a bonded warehouse right now this is satan's world this is satan's world okay so i want to stop right here um no actually I want to continue right so now all these things I have scriptures on bail bail bondsman and the bond the bond is Christ's blood that was put up for us to it didn't change our destiny and the judgment that we had to go through but it saved us because it reunited us back. Okay. Bond. That which binds or is held together a band. So his blood was that bond or influence. Surety. One who agrees to be responsible for another debt or default. A pledge. See. Or guarantee to secure against loss. Default. A failure or neglect to fulfill any obligation or requirement as to pay money due to appear in court. Recidivist, listen to this well. A person who continues to commit crimes even after being caught and punished. So we went into a concept of recidivism. We are the person, we are recidivists. And we do something called recidivism. So we, the Most High would save us, take us out of the captivity, and we would break the laws again, and he would put us back in the captivity, and that cycle continued over and over and over. This is our last captivity. So with that, um, like I said, all this right here procedure is very deep. You know, on the law, I mean, I have more pages on this stuff. It's very deep, very vast. So I'm just giving you, for number one, the terms dealing with the Bible and what happened with the Mosai, Christ, and Satan. Peace.